Good morning. It's good to be with you again today. My name's Pastor David, and I'm Pastor of Matthew 633, Open Our Ministries. And uh, we're going to be back in the book of Revelations again, chapter 14. Uh, today as we get into the into the message and uh, I thank the Lord and praise him for our study in in the book of Revelations you say preacher you going to been there for a long time well it's a big book amen and the Jesus that I'm talking to you about friend uh, is the author of this book and it's written of him and it's written friend so that the children of Israel might know who Jesus is and they'll come to the knowledge of that one of these days, friend, when uh, uh, the church is raptured and uh, the Christians of today and the day of grace that we live, uh, when we're taken out of this world, the Holy Spirit of God is going to take its flight with the church. And then God, there's another dispensation going to start. And that seven years uh, is a time of tribulation. Uh, that's going to be down here on this earth. Uh, the Antichrist is going to set up a one world government, uh, he's going to be in charge and uh, uh, he's going to have a, uh, uh, a false messiah and he's going to have a false prophet down here uh, during that time and uh, the world is going to be deceived. Uh, uh, but it says in Matthew chapter 24 that if it were possible that even the very elect of God would also be deceived. Uh, but friend, uh, it's not possible, friend, to deceive those ones that God opens their eyes, talking about the children of Israel. Now, it's been prophesied down through the Old Testament, just about every one of the prophets, uh, from Ezekiel all the way down, uh, uh, and all of them, well, just all of them, uh, friend, have been, uh, it's been prophesied that God's going uh, to redeem his people. He's going to forgive their sins. He's going to... Uh, put their iniquities far from them. He's going to write their uh, uh, their laws upon the tables of their hearts, and uh, uh, he's going to forgive them of their sins. And uh, right now, friend, they're blinded. Romans chapter eleven. If you want to go over and read that, it says that they've been blinded in part that till the fullness of the Gentiles come in. That's you and I, friend. That's been. Uh, saved by God's marvelous grace, that out of every kindred and tongue and people all over this world, friend, that have come to know Jesus Christ uh, as their as their Savior, Amen. And because uh, God made promises to the children of Israel, uh, God is not slack, friend, concerning His promises uh, that some men might count slackness, friend. But God will perform all of those things that he said he was going to do. Amen. There's coming a time, friend, called Jacob's trouble that's coming to this uh, to the nation of Israel and to those people over there. You think, well, uh, what's going on over there right now? And this is 2024, and uh, we're entering toward, if time tarries, the, uh, the, the trees is going to start putting forth, and uh, uh, things are going to be, be, uh, start budding, and, and we're going to know if time tarries, friend, this summer is not at hand. In other words, that you know, there's a new season coming on. Amen. Well, I believe with all of my heart, friend, that we're living in the last days uh, down here. I believe that all of these things that we've been seeing is lining up uh, for the uh, the rapture of the church and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say, preacher, do you know the day that the rapture is going to take place? No, and I thank God that I don't know what day it's coming because if I knew that he was coming in uh, July the 2nd uh, in 2024, if I knew that day and everything, I, a day's a good change. I would probably want to wait right down to the last minute before I got serious with God, just before he's coming. But because he's coming as a thief in the night to the world uh, down here and to the people that are saved and unsaved, amen. He, he gave us some scripture, and he said in Matthew 24, 44, be ye also uh, ready in the hour that you think not the Son of Man cometh. He also said over the hour that if the good man of the house had known in what hour the thief would come in, uh, he would have made ready and not allowed his house to be broken up. What that's saying is, friend, God has sent us a warning uh, from the foundation of this world, friend, 
uh, that he's going to send a, a Savior. Amen. That was prophesied all the way in the Garden of Eden over there to Adam and Eve uh, the, of, of a coming Savior, friend. Well, the devil's tried his best to destroy that, uh, that prophecy ever since it was prophesied. The Bible said in the fullness of time, he sent forth his son into this world. That was the fulfillment of that prophecy that was prophesied over there in, the, in Genesis, over there that they would be one come, uh, that uh, the devil's head would be bruised and it would bruise his heel. Uh, your man. Uh, and when Jesus came out victorious over death, hell, and the grave at the resurrection, friend, uh, the devil lost the battle. Just as plain and simple as that. The devil lost the battle. But he doesn't realize that he's a defeated foe. Why? Because there's some things that has to come to pass. Uh, friend, down in the end of this, and, and the devil's going to try his best to deceive as many as he possibly can. Uh, and he's and he's doing that job today and everything. And I hate to say if there's anything that you could say good about Satan, that he knows what he's doing and he does his job well down here in this world. Uh, he's bringing deception on every hand. He, remember, he's the father of lies. Amen. He's a liar from the beginning, according to the word of God. And because he's a liar from the, the beginning and because he's the man of, of deception, he's the deceiver, uh, he's deceived multitudes of people. Amen. Uh, in the first deception that he ever done, he deceived uh, one, about one third of the angels of heaven. Uh, he deceived them into thinking that they could overthrow the throne of God. Uh, friend, uh, the, you know, Satan was a created being. Uh, and all of those angels were created beings, amen. And friend, you don't overthrow the creator today, amen, because he is, he always has been, is now, and always will be. And uh, yes, there's coming a, a finalization down in the end of this thing. The devil and all of his angels and all of his demons is going to be cast into the lake of fire with burneth forever and ever. Now, I preached to you last week on, on those people that's going to be in hell. Amen. And I, re I read to you a couple of lists, went over in the book of Romans and, and one there in the book of Revelations chapter 21 uh, of those people that uh, is going to be there. And I made a statement, my friend, if you meet the criteria uh, of any of these people that was written in them list, that list over there, I'm talking about someone that hates God, uh, that refuses to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that is the truth this morning. Uh, amen. That's the only way that you can get into, into heaven. Amen. And also read to you over there and that God would be, uh, be with us and he would be our God. Amen. Them that believe today. Belief is the only way you'll get to, uh, you have to believe God. Believe the report. Believe the word. Believe that his son come into this world to, be, uh, to die for, in your place, friend, on the cross of Calvary. I believe that he rose again the third in the appointed morning. Amen. Uh, he said over there, he said, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it back up again. Amen. Remember, he was God in the flesh. Amen. He lived a spotless life down here. Uh, he satisfied uh, the, uh, the all-righteous and the all-knowing God, the sovereign God. He satisfied the sovereign God. God looked down upon his own son down there. And he said in two different places, and he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Going all the way back into the Old Testament over there, uh, when Abraham and Isaac was going up the mountain, the part where Isaac was going to, uh, to uh, uh, sacrifice his own son, his only son, uh, there on the altar to God. And, and Isaac asked the question, he said, Father, here's the, uh, the wood and there's the fire, but Where's the lamb? And uh, Abraham made a very, very profound statement of where he said, son, my God, or our God, however you want to bring it out, will provide himself a lamb. Amen. Then the Bible says in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friend, that is, that is, I guess, the greatest verse of Scripture in all of the Word of God. What God done that you and I might have salvation. 
You say, how do I get it this morning, uh, Brother David? You get it through believing and trusting in what thus saith the word of God. You're begotten by the word. You're drawn by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, and God gives you the faith to believe uh, in the written word. And by doing all of that, you say, boy, that sounds like a whole lot. No, it's not, friend. It's easy. Amen. If you, the Bible says in the book of Revelations in the first few chapters over there, the messages to the seven churches, he said seven times, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Friend, if you're listening to this, this uh, when it comes out, uh, if you'll let God speak to your heart, if you'll open your mind and your heart and you listen, uh, amen, you can be saved by God's marvelous grace. Uh, friend, his word is sharp. It's powerful. Uh, friend, it's, uh, uh, it, it will divide, uh, plumb down to the asunder, the moan and the bar. I mean, plumb, I mean, uh, it'll cut you deep, friend. Uh, amen. But there's one thing about that sword, friend. It's, uh, uh, it's a, it's a two edged sword. The word of God is, amen. It cuts, uh, all the way down, uh, with one edge, and, but the other edge is allowing it to come back together and it's healing you. Amen. If you allow the sword of God, friend, to open your heart, amen, that you might receive the word of God, uh, amen, he'll bring a healing in your life. He'll quicken you and make you a fit vessel for the kingdom of God, amen. Well, it's, been good. it's good already being here this morning. I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the love of God. I appreciate a time of prayer this morning. I uh, I sat and, and listened to the message from last week, and, and boy, I'll tell you what. Now, that's the first time I'd heard it, and I preached it, but I don't remember everything that uh, that God gave me to say. Uh, amen. I would to God that I could uh, remember it all, uh, but it, I, I stand in amazement uh, what God can do with this, this hunk of flesh that you're looking at here this morning. Uh, friend, it's, it's not me. Uh, amen. It's God. Uh, that, that touches hearts. It's God that opens these lips of clay. Amen. It's his word that I've hid in my heart that I'm trying my best to manifest to you, friend, telling you how to be saved by God's marvelous grace. And boy, I tell you what, it's wonderful. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, now, I lived a pretty good while down here in this world. I was 22 years old when I got saved by the grace of God. Uh, amen. And I experienced a lot of the of the junk of this world, and a lot of it I would to God I hadn't experienced because uh, it's a plague in my mind. Uh, a lot of times I'd like to I'd like to be out from under that, uh, but you know, like Paul of, of old when he uh, when he prayed over there and he said, God, he said, remove this thorn from my flesh. Uh, amen. God looked at him. He said, uh, He said, Paul. He said, I've given you this thorn. Uh, a messenger from Satan to buffet you. Amen. Uh, I thank God today uh, that uh, we have a messenger that buffets us along the way because if we didn't have that buffeting uh, and if we didn't have those things that coming into our life and, and everything like that, well, just in a little while we get to thinking that, that we is more than what we really are. Amen. I'm just a sinner saved by God's marvelous grace. Amen. And if time tarries today before it gets dark down here in this world, it's somewhere or another around getting close to 11 o'clock, I guess. Uh, amen. But somewhere or another, uh, you know, all of the praying I done this morning, trying to get my life straightened up enough to where that I could even preach to you this morning. Uh, amen. I try to be clean before I get up and try to preach. Amen. And everything, and I'm like the psalmist David over there. I, I, I have to pray all the time. Oh, Lord, search me, know me, uh, I, uh, create within me a new heart. Amen. Cleanse me. Amen. I need that cleansing, friend, that only the Holy Spirit of God can give. See, us preachers, we're, uh, we're not perfect. Amen. Regardless to what some people might think, amen, or some preachers might think that they're perfect. But, friend, they're just sinners saved by the grace of God, just like me and you. Uh, uh, amen. If you're saved by God's marvelous grace and dear sinner, listen to me out there. If you don't know Jesus as your savior, you can know him. Uh, amen. And, and, and I'll guarantee you, friend, he'll, he'll create within you a new heart. Uh, and, and, and he, and the Holy spirit of God will begin to help you. If you'll cultivate, 
uh, that Christian life, you can do something for God. Amen. But if you don't cultivate it, amen, you'll be saved, yet so as by far one of these days. Amen. But you know what? I want to lay something at the feet of Jesus. I want to have something when I get over on the other side, something that goes through the fire of God's judgment that I've got, amen, uh, uh, to give to him. You say, what are you talking about? The Bible says that we can, we can, we can have some crowns, friend. There's a soul winner's crown and, and uh, there's a martyr's crown. Uh, there's a crown of righteousness. When you receive Jesus Christ, you'll get that automatically, friend. You, uh, that's uh, without earning it. Amen. You get that. That's the one he said over there. It's grace through faith, not of works, least any man should boast. Amen. When you believe and trust in Jesus Christ and ask him to come into your heart and soul and he comes into you, friend, that'll be awaiting for you over on the other side, that crown of life. It's eternal, friend. Uh, he said over there, he said, I will in no wise cast you out. Amen. So you've got a crown waiting on you. If you're saved by God's marvelous grace, lost friend, you can have a crown to lay at the, at the feet of Jesus. But if you'll begin to work, if you'll cultivate in the word, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, then the workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth. Amen. He said that verse, study to show yourself approved. Amen. Unto God. Unto God. We study. That's how it works. That's how you grow. That's how you get more faith. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Your faith increases as you grow in the grace and knowledge. Amen. There's a kind of a, 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 an old statement that's made a lot of times. And everything we, we live and learn, grow old and die and forget it all. <laughs> but we don't, brother. Listen to me. Listen to me. They is... A lot of things that you'll learn down here in this world. And one of these days when you when you pass away, you'll leave this world behind. And that knowledge, will it'll cease. Amen. Behold, all things will become new to you. But some of those things that you've done for the Lord Jesus Christ and some of the works that you'll do down here after you receive Jesus Christ as, you, as your Lord and Savior, friend, those works are going to follow you to the other side. Amen. They'll come in the form of crowns. Uh, they'll come in the form uh, of uh, a precious stone, uh, you know, gold, silver, and precious stone. Revelation, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He said that your works will be revealed by the fire of God's word. Amen. Uh, amen. And, and, and we're going to get into that a little bit this morning. Let me go ahead and read this. You'll say, preacher, you're going to talk for 20 minutes and you ain't even read the scripture yet. Well, I can't help it. Amen. I, I've got something to talk about. <laughs> hey, and and believe you me, when people give me an opportunity, uh, sometimes I wasted a lot of time during the day just standing around talking about the goodness of God. But uh, you know that's uh, physical time. But in in the spiritual sense of these things, friend, it's not wasted time. Uh, amen. Uh, the Bible says you can live in heavenly places while you're down here. Huh? I didn't know that. Yeah, you sure can. Uh, when you get around well, somebody that your spirit bears witness with uh, uh, with your spirit that you're both children of God and you start talking about the goodness of God and the things that God has revealed to you through the word and you start sharing those things. Uh, you know, he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, he said, there I will be also. What about that? Who is that? Jesus, friend. I, I, he's going to be there with you, amen, in the spirit. Now remember, he is God. Uh, amen. And he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. And he can be everywhere at all times. And when a couple of the brethren or a couple of the sisters or a, a small group of people uh, get together and they've got their mind and heart set on the things of God, amen, over there, uh, it, God will come down and, and manifest himself to you through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And you can sit in some heavenly places, friend, down here on this earth. You say, well, I didn't know it was like that. Yeah, it is. Next Sunday, friend, when you go, when you go to your church, if you'll, uh, if you'll read and study and pray and say, God, I want, I, want to, I want to rejoice. I want to praise God. I want to lift up your holy name. I want to testify. Uh, amen. 
And if you'll go in there, you might scare somebody to death in your church. If it's a, a kind of a, a church, it's a little quiet. Uh, but you know what? You're liable to strike a match. It'll set a fire, friend. And after a little while, when, when it kind of settles down, you'll look around like the psalmist David and said, boy, it was good when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and read this this morning. Amen. I dealt with uh, verses... Uh, Let's see, which ones was it? I worked, uh, uh, verses 9, 10, and 11 uh, last week. Amen. And uh, I brought a message on the, on, uh, the people uh, or devil worshipers, the ones that will worship the devil and, and where their final abode is, and that's the lake of fire, which burneth forever and ever. And it speaks of it here. And he says in verse 11, he says, And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worshiped uh, the beast and his image, and, worship, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Now, verse 12. Let's get in verse 12. We'll read a few verses here. I'm going to do 12 and 13 uh, right now, and I don't know about the others yet, uh, but we're going to read down through uh two or three of them here. Amen. Here is patience, verse 12, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that kept the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Uh, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yet saith the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Amen. Now, we, I've noticed in the studies of the book of Revelations just ever little bit that uh, God's bringing out uh, wrath. He's bringing out uh, the things that is going to happen to the people that turns their back on God and during this seven years of tribulation, the judgment is coming to this world and the God haters and the devil, uh, his false prophet, his false Messiah, uh, you know, uh, and all of the things that he set up, the world system, and we'll get into that a little bit when we get into the, uh, the Babylonian empire as we get on down into this. And uh, uh, all of the things that, uh, that, been that was left behind. Now remember, uh, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, friend. He's making intercession for you and I. Amen. Now, those that uh, come to the Lord Jesus Christ during the time of tribulation. Now remember, we're there with him in Revelation chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 3 over there. He says, come up hither. That's speaking of the rapture. Then it's mentioned several other times uh, in different places. Now the word rapture is not in the word of God. Don't go look for it, friend. It's not in there. But the catching out or the taking up, amen, is in the word of God. Uh, and it says over there in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, I believe it is, and it says over there and it talks about that this mortal, what you're looking at here, must put on immortality. This uh, 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 and we've got you know, and this body that you're looking at here uh, is going to take on the, a form of a new body. Amen. And we're going to be there with Jesus. The Bible says that the voice of the south of the archangel, the dead in Christ, will rise first, and we which are alive and remain will be changed in a moment. Uh, in a twinkling of an eye. And if you've listened to some of the other messages back, I've dealt with that probably several times and probably deal with it again before this. Before I'm through the book of Revelations, if God tarries his coming, uh, amen, and we get to have a little bit more time down here, uh, amen. But now I want you to look at this. There's a, there's a group of people that comes out, of, uh, comes out of tribulation. I want to read to you over here in uh, chapter 7. And I'm going to start reading in verse 9. Listen to what it says. And after this, behold, and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number, of all nations, kindred, and tongues, and people, stood before uh, the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. 
And all of the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their face and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessed, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what well, are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And he said unto uh, him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came up out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, serving him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Then it goes on to say here, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the light of sun uh, uh, on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them uh, unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. Now you and I today that are in the dispensation of grace, that received Jesus Christ as our Savior uh, friend, and at the rapture of the church when he says to his children, to the bride, the Lamb's wife, and we'll get on into that in, Re in Revelation 19. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, he's going to say, come up hither that quick. If the Lord comes, and this camera is still a, 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 a working this morning. Sometimes it quits. Sometimes I have to do the message over again. Uh, but if this uh, camera is still working and the, and the Lord comes and says, and the shout comes right now, this pair of glasses you'll see hit the, hit the Bible. My clothes will fall to the ground. Amen. I'll vanish before your sight and I'll stand before God in a, in a brand new body. Amen. With all of my hair. Uh, uh, amen. With no scars on it. They scars all over my body. Uh, amen. Seems like every time I fell when I was little, my chin is the first place it hid. Uh, I wire a little higher over it right now to hide some of the scars. Both of my eyebrows has had eight stitches in them. Uh, uh, when I was, uh, I think I was in eighth grade. Yeah, I was in eighth grade. I was on a bicycle and there was a feller in a 69 Camaro uh, hit me uh, running about 80 mile an hour. And I glanced off the windshield as I went up, and the radio wire cut me across the back when I went up. You say, Preacher, uh, uh, did you have a close encounter? It wasn't my time to go. Amen. Now, we talked about the sovereignty of God the other day and uh, in one of the messages. And uh, amen. There will come a day and time, friend, that it will be my day to leave. Amen. But God looked down through the process of time and he saw what I would be doing. He knew that he was going to call me into the ministry. He knew that I would be standing here talking to you today, friend. Uh, amen. And I'm ready to meet God. And if you're ready to meet God, friend, uh, the rapture takes place. You're going to go be with Jesus. Amen. To be absent from the body, Paul penned, is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Now then, let's go back to our scripture just a minute. In uh, chapter 6 of the book of Revelations, when they opened the fifth seal, listen to what it said. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell uh, on the earth? Amen. Now let's go back over to uh, Revelations chapter 14. Now, there's kind of a brief intermission here. Now, he talks about, uh, you know, uh, d down through 14 and, and all of the things that we've talked about. We talked about the evil powers, uh, the Babylonian Empire, which we've not got into that. But it, 14 is kind of a summary of what's going to be happening in 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way down through there. And then we get into 19. And we see some judgments taking place in chapter 20. And then down in chapter 21, and we see the new heaven and the new earth and who's going to be there. 
Uh, amen. And uh, then in chapter 20 uh, and, and everything, and then he goes on in the latter part of chapter 22 of the book of Revelations over there, he said, whosoever will, if they want to take of the water of life freely. Amen. But this is one of those places that the Lord speaks just a little bit, and he said, then he said, here is the patience of the saints. Now, you say, well, who is the saints? Well, friend, if you're a child of God today, uh, you're in the eyes of God as a saint. You're one of the saints of God. That's who you are. Amen. If you've been uh, saved by God's marvelous grace, you're one of God's saints. Well, I don't act too saintly. Well, most of us don't, friend. Think about that. Most of us don't. But see, now what we do down here in this flesh is that we put expectations on other people that there is no way in the world that you and I can keep ourselves. Amen. Think about that. Before you look down your nose it's an, and judge somebody else for the life that they're living, you better look at your own life. Amen. Because we've all got dark places in our life. Amen. The Bible calls it a besetting sin. What is a besetting sin? It's something that you do over and over and over and over again. You say, how do you, how do you get away from that? Well, the Bible says that you have to turn away from something in order to get true forgiveness. You've got to turn away from it. See, God already knew you, friend, from the foundation of the world. Amen. A lot of us will die off and leave him. And we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of the works and the deeds done in the body, whether they be good or bad. You see, that's scary. Yes, it is. Amen. You're not going to stand there with your head held high, friend, uh, and everything and say, God, look what i done down here. Uh, I, want, I want a wheelbar to push my crowns around in. That ain't going to happen. You're going to see, you, you ain't got but one thing on your mind when you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Thank you, God, for getting me here, and I don't have anything, anything to boast in save the blood of my darling Savior, Jesus Christ. That's all you will have to boast in. Amen. And when your life is required to you and your in the judgment that follows you and the works that follows you into that place called heaven, friend, you'll give an account for. The Bible says every idle word. Boy, that there gets us all, don't it? <laughs> yeah, every idle word. Now, I like to talk. And uh, these times that I talk and talk and talk, and I sometimes talk too much. Amen. You know, foolishness. Uh, you can't help but carry it around. It's my pastor, and I've heard him say this. He said, I would to God that I could remember Scripture as good as I can remember the old foolishness that's in my mind that I learned when I was just a child. Think about that. What are you watching? What are you listening to? Yeah, I'm guilty. You're guilty. Everybody's guilty. Amen. Before God. There's none righteous. No, not one, friend. The only righteousness that you, is the righteousness that is given to us that came from Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. He was righteous before God. He came to do. John 17, he said, Father, those things that you have given me to do, I have done. Amen. I've done it. All right, let's, let's go back here to this verse. See, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that kept the commandments uh, of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Now, that tells me there, when I see the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, he's talking about the Jewish people. Remember, the book of Revelation is revealing to the children of Israel who Jesus is. Amen. Remember the word that gets penned over in the, in the New Testament over there, uh, be, uh, that they will behold the one in whom they pierced. It's also uh, penned over there that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ uh, is the Son of God to the glory of God. Amen. Uh, that's everybody, friend. Everyone that's ever been born into this world, from Adam and Eve all the way down, they'll stand and give an account. Amen. You say, well, what about the great white throne of judgment? Well, first of all, those people that will be brought out of hell, he said, death and hell will give up its dead. Uh, and the sea and the earth and because it's going to flee away and there'll be no more place found for them. They're being helped in limbo out there to why? Till they step before the throne of God over there and they can plead their case. 
and everything, and everything, what are they going to say? And everything over there. They know, by that time, friend, they know that there was a man called Jesus come into this world. They knew, and they knew. They knowed all about this. They knowed about it. Amen. Well, I'm going to get real deep here, and I don't want I don't want you to I don't want to lose you on that there. But those people that were in 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 hell over there in Luke 15 or Luke 16, one of the other, I believe it's Luke 16, uh, it talks about the rich man and Lazarus, and uh, Lazarus uh, died. He was laid at the rich man's gate, and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Then the rich man died also. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. And the first thing that, that, that he wanted to do, well, first of all, he wanted to, God to send Lazarus down there to cool his parched tongue. Amen. Then the next thing he wanted uh, uh, Abraham to do was to send somebody to his brother and, and tell them not to come to this awful place that he was in. Amen. You know, they knew. They knew there was a, pre- a place that was prepared. Everybody down there knows the man called Jesus. Everybody down there, if they had an opportunity to come back into this world just for a brief second, uh, friend, they would confess before God that they were sinners and ask Jesus Christ to come down into their heart and soul and so they could be saved. Amen. They wouldn't want to come back to all of their riches. They wouldn't want to come back to the splendor of this earth that God has given. Amen. They'd want to come back for one reason, that they might accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now then, they'll not be given that opportunity at the great white throne of judgment over there. They're standing to be judged for the works and the deeds that they've done uh, in their body. Now, Matthew chapter 7, I believe it is, there's a bunch of people that, good people, good people, in the eyes of the world, good people, going to stand before them, look what we done in thy name. Didn't we not cast out demons? Did we not prophesy? That's preach. Did not we do many wonderful works in your name? Amen. And he said over there, he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. I never think. And there's going to be a Lamb's book of life over there. And their names uh, that have accepted Jesus Christ as a Savior is pinned in that. But the, it'll be searched. The book will be searched. Amen. Uh, before they're cast into the lake of fire, their names are not found, and they'll find themselves in the lake of fire. Amen. Let's go back to these verses of Scripture. Now, these are the saints. These are the people that have believed uh, in God, believed in Jesus Christ, Amen. I'm talking to you about some saved people here. That's these that come up out of great tribulation, have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Let me read to you something over here in chapter 12. And I've read this two or three times to you, but when God showed me this, now this is talking about the sun clothed woman, which is Israel. And there appeared in the first one, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet uh, and upon her head, uh, a crown of 12 stars. That's talking about the children of Israel. Amen. Uh, the woman was Israel. Uh, and the, the 12 stars are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Then it goes ahead. And the prophecy was given concerning a child. And she shall bring forth. Uh, uh, and, she will, and she being with child. Travailing in birth. Uh, and painting to be delivered. Amen. Uh, they knew. Isaiah penned over there. Uh, that a son would be born. Amen. Uh, and his name would be called uh, uh, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Those names were given to the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of Matthew says that his name was Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. But anyway, this is being revealed in chapter 12 over there, and it tells what's happened. This goes from the beginning all the way down through history, friend. Uh, here and then in verse 17, and it says, And the dragon was wrought with the woman, talking about Satan, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments. That's, that's the Israelites. They kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. They've, they're crying, Abba, Father, 
through the blood of Jesus Christ, just like you and I, friend, today. I can cry, Father Abraham, today through his blood. I've been grafted into the family of God. These people didn't know they were already of the family of God, uh, amen, of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, amen, uh, amen. But they have received at this time the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now that 144,000 preachers that went out to preach, amen, they preached what? The message of Jesus, amen. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is in hand, amen. They're getting ready to see the second coming, Amen. And, and we're going to see that on down there when we get into verses 14, 15, 16. We're going, going to see the second phase of the second coming. All right. And then it says, here is the patience of saints. And here are they that kept the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, uh, saith the the Scripture, uh, saith the Spirit, sorry, uh, they shall rest, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. All right, and he says that they rest from their labors. All right, let's look at this. Now, I can't cover everything, friend. I ain't got that kind of time, but I want to show you something. In Revelation chapter 20, uh, start reading with me in, rest, in verse 5. It says, But the rest of the dead live not again until uh, uh, the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed, notice what it said, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and Christ, uh, and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is the sands of the seas. Amen. Now, uh, these are, listen to what it says, and go back up into verse 4. He says, and I saw the thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. All right, let's go back over here and look at that. He says, and here is patience of the saints. They, here are they that have the commandments, uh, that keep the commandments and have the faith of Jesus. What? Yes, that's what it is, friend. This is, this is the ones they're talking about here in verses 12 and 13. And, and, and he calls them over here. Uh, uh, they're blessed, friend. Uh, and, and right here in verse 13. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. This is talking about uh, the time of tribulation. Those saints that come up out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, even in the wrath of God, friend, there's mercy and grace for whosoever will. Amen. Now let me read a little bit more there in verse, uh, verse 4, chapter 20. Notice what it said. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the, for the witness uh, of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast. All right. When's the beast going to make his appearance? During that time of tribulation. Uh, amen. Had not worshipped the beast, neither his image. They're going to set up an image over there that's going to speak great swelling words, friend, going to deceive the nations. Neither had received uh, his mark. They're not going to receive the mark in their forehead or in their hand. Amen. During that time. Uh, and the mark in your forehead or in their hand. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Amen. Now, there's a group of people that's coming up out of great tribulation, friend. Now, and I've talked to you many times about this. I want to talk to you one more time about it. If you turn away the grace of God today and the truth of God's word, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, see, God was going to, would send you strong delusions. If you turn away from a truth today, 
God will send you strong delusions that you'll believe a lie and be damned. The lie is that Antichrist is coming and he's going to try to present himself as the very Christ. He said in Matthew 24 over there, if it were possible that the very elect might be deceived. Amen. Now remember, uh, uh, the children of Israel over there is going to rebuild their temple and there's going to be a daily sacrifice go on for a while, about three and a half years. And at the midpoint, the abomination of the desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, and it's also penned in Matthew 24, uh, amen, it's going to take place. The Antichrist is going to walk in, sit down on the mercy seat, and proclaim himself God. Amen. And all of the people that refuse to believe during the day of grace, that's right now, friend, you will receive the Antichrist, and you'll look up and call him God. You'll call him the Messiah. You will worship him, and you'll find your place in the lake of fire, friend, down at the end of this. Amen. But there's also a group of people that comes up out of great tribulation, people that's never known who Jesus is, people that's never heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're begotten by the word and drawn by the spirit. Friend, if, you, if, if you're down here and you've never heard the word, the word of God, and you've never understood anything about God or about the, the Spirit of God or about His Son, Jesus, and you don't know that, say, you, say you've been brought up, in, in uh, you're a Hindu, or you're a, a, a Muslim, or, or, or one of the other uh, religions of this world down here. You say, well, how will they understand and how will they know? It's 144,000 preachers, friend. It's going to go out into this world and they're going, to, they're going to let people know what took place. They're going to let them know where their children went. Amen. Let's say it's a young uh, 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 Buddhist family over there. They don't teach Jesus Christ over there. They don't teach uh, the, God, the sovereign God of heaven. Amen. They don't teach him. Uh, their religion is, is based in, in, in the things of Buddha over there. But when the rapture of the church takes place, friend, all of those little ones below the age of accountability that does not know the difference between good and evil, friend, they're going to vanish just like that out of their sight. And any of those women that are pregnant, that's carrying a child, she'll never bring it forth because God will take it. Take it right from the womb. Amen. Amen. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, because that they're alive, friend, regardless to what the world says and the things that they want to believe, friend, that is a lie, friend, from conception. That's my belief. Amen. But they'll leave this world. And when that 144,000, I don't know the doctrine they'll preach other than they're going to be a preaching repent for the kingdom of heaven is in hand. They're going to be preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified for the remission of sin. That's all they really need to preach. But questions are going to be asked. Them people, you say, well, how can they talk to them if, it, if, it's, uh, if they're, if they're in, in China or somewhere or another like that? The day of Pentecost explains that all to you, friend. The Holy Spirit of God can speak all languages. Think about that. They're going to be energized with the mark of God in their forehead and the Holy Spirit of God will give them what they need during that time. Amen. Think about this. Think about this. They're going to understand and know that they was left behind. They're going to understand and know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. That'll be preached. And here they are. They're going to understand and know, friend, that, that, that this world's in turmoil. And they'll accept that. And there'll be a multitude of them saved from every kindred, tongue, and nation, and people. Amen. And God calls them blessed here in verse 13. And their works do follow them. Amen. Just like our works follows us. Amen. One of these days, I'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And everything that I've said and done after I've been saved by God's marvelous grace, amen, I'll give an account for it. Amen. Well, what about your time when before you were saved, all of that was cast into the uh, away from God, never to be remembered anymore. Amen.
God cast it away from him. He don't remember your former life, friend. But your life starts when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's the message God's given us today. Amen.